Welcome to the Leggett Podcast. This episode is kindly sponsored by Feel Supreme. We've uh, they've kindly been sponsors for the last number of episodes, and they've got some incredible um, supplements and health products. I'm currently taking the CBD 500 milligram. Um, it's amazing. I can't um, say and stress how much it's helped me with sleep, uh, which is a massive big problem for me. Um, but they've got a number of different supplements as well that they want to push. Uh, vitamin C, D3, um, vitamin D is obviously brilliant to help with uh, immunity at the moment, which is um, certainly a topical um, topical area, if you like. So if you go to the link which we've included below, which is feelsupreme.co.uk forward slash legit, you can purchase all of their products through that link. And please make sure you go and click it, click through that link because it basically shows that uh, we have sent you, the Leggett Podcast has sent you. So again, massive thanks to Feel Supreme. Huge, huge amount amount of different products that they've got on offer as well. Um, and like I said, can't stress the CBD enough and the vitamin D3 as well. So hope you enjoy this episode and uh, we'll see you soon. Please don't forget as well to support us on Patreon. Basically, Patreon's like a private members area, if you like, for the Leggett Podcast. And it gives you access to all previous episodes it also gives you early access to all our episodes um, as soon as we record them pretty much uh, and we're also pushing out some more exclusive content that will be only available for people uh, who support us on patreon so if you go to patreon.com forward slash leg it podcast uh, then you can help support the podcast over there if you do enjoy the episodes that we do you know we do one episode per week and then it's a great way of showing your support for us. Um, you guys have helped us very kindly uh, lease an office, an office space, a studio space where we're going to um, be taking the Leggett podcast to the next level. And you can help support us uh, on Patreon. So massive thanks to everyone who's done that as well. We're on. Me, Andy Grant, and we have Ian Barrigan. No Thank problem. you so much for being here, mate. No problem. Um, so I first met you when I was got to do a bit of work with the Liverpool's Academy, um, doing kind of motivational talks and things like that. So I got to meet you, and more recently, I think everyone knows you now for being the man who who discovered the best right back we've ever seen. Well, I got a book off Andy Robinson the week he said he was the second best full back in the world. I so. seen that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But to start with, I mean, I didn't think we were going to start it this way. But you're not even a scouser. That's the no. biggest thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> all I'd say is, was my dad was in the army. That's why I was, wasn't born here. But I was christened in Saint Dominic's. So yeah. The eyes of God. I'm a, I'm a scouser. There so where, where are you originally from then? Um, we're from Liverpool. My dad's from Liverpool. My dad's from Liverpool. Oh, where yeah. Yeah, my dad joined the army in the sixties because he could, that, couldn't get out. Yeah. So we would sit there. Obviously, he lived all over Germany. He lived in all over the country, different places. And we came back here when we was eleven. Oh, so your mum's out away from Liverpool? Yeah, 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 yeah right, Liverpool. Yeah. The family's all from Liverpool. My eldest brother was born in Liverpool. Me and me, me and my brother were born in Germany, and my younger sister was born in Tidworth. I suppose as I said there then about your accent. I suppose that's in your teens and in senior school, that's when you develop your accent yeah. anyway, isn't it? Well yeah. So. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> um, no, you wouldn't have known, no. I've told everyone now. <laughs> I, have, I have been I have been to six European Cup finals, have yeah. I? I scouts, isn't it? <laughs> um so on that then mate, when you've come back to Liverpool, just football mad then, was it? Yeah, yeah, football mad and uh, obviously Liverpool hadn't won the European Cup till they come back to the city, you know, come back in uh, April 1977, you know what I mean? I think it's all down to us. Uh, no, football's our family all the way through, you know what I mean? And my dad, my dad's the only, well, my dad's family were all blues. Thankfully, my dad's uh, uncle turned my dad into a red, so I'll imagine the misery there, you know what I mean? But we're all Liverpool fans, my brothers go all over, my brother goes all, my brothers all go all over Europe, what go all the games. So, mad, mad Liverpool family. How were you when you got that photo yourself? Uh, it was all right, yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. You know what I mean, when I was uh, younger, I played a little bit of semi semi pro, a few games, but you know, not really. Because at the time, you know, when you're playing footy and you're, like, you're younger, uh, Liverpool were the best team in the world, weren't they? And mm. you wanted to go all the games, didn't you? So instead of going to play, you'd want to watch Liverpool, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm. I, I was mean. going to ask actually, is that a prerequisite of being a football scout? Is having no, a background no, my, in football or? No, me getting into football was my son and running Sunday league teams and I had a team called Country Park and we were a really really good team uh, I just started with my son 
and I just kicked off. I did. Uh, so just, honestly, so just a hobby then. Just, yeah, a just a hobby. Well, the biggest thing is my father-in-law is Jimmy Aspinall. So Jimmy Aspinall found McManaman, Fowler, Gerard, big Liverpool scouts <laughs> years ago. So really, I sort of his sons are both Evertonians. <laughs> so I sort of followed in Jimmy's footsteps. My father-in-law, he was like my mentor, and I just started running kids' footy teams. And then next thing, you just it just snowballs, doesn't it? So what were you, what were you doing job-wise then? Yeah, uh, plaster. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then I just did it part time. I was just doing the football, and we had a couple of players who Liverpool were interested in, and one was you know blonde player who the, the, I knew the dad. I worked for the, with the dad, and he said, "Do you want to uh, bring you, any chance you get into the dad to come into Liverpool?" And no one could get him to come in. So my father in said, "You know, I think he what's his name to get him to come in. I won't drop names like." And uh, and he's um, I got him to come in, and then Steve Iway said, "How come he come in?" He said, "Oh, my father, my son-in-law got him in." He said, we're just meant to be doing a bit of scouting for us in the Walton Decatur. So that's how it started. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so about two or three years later, um, got, we had about two or three years later, 26 kids signed from professional football clubs from Country Bar. All, you know, like Liverpool, Everton, Man United, Preston, Blackburn. So we were just like really good. So th this kids team, how, how old was with the kids that you were doing? Uh, from six to 15. We had 11 teams at one point. So likes of uh, you know Trent played for them, Flano played for them, um, Ben Woodburn played for them, uh, Cameron Brannigan, things like that. So they're all they're really good players all the way through. That's mad. And then what Liverpool just said, obviously you've got a you've got a bit of a way with the players and stuff. And do you mind? No, well I just started. I was like I was the Walton Kirtel scout, and then you know you keep getting players signed. Then I became the Liverpool area scout. Then I, then Liverpool asked me to do. A bit of like player liaison, picking players up, looking after them. Started doing that, doing that, and then, and then after that, I sort of just went up the ranks. And what year are we looking at here? Um, I started in um, nineteen ninety-seven, and I've been doing it like twenty, twenty, be twenty-four years in May. So, when you know, I've got like my dossier there, all the kids you've signed, I've found like one hundred and sixty players for the building at different ages. One hundred and sixty. Yeah, on my little, you know, when you just get your letter. You signed this player, we'll thank well done, good job and got a like list, yeah. So all the players you go through. And then obviously you're uh, you know, you just get you know, when you get players in, so you know, you're involved with players like like I was heavily involved with Andre Wisdom coming in, mm. then Flano was in, and then Trent, so a bit of a specialist at right backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. I I remember seeing it, there was a I've spoken about this before, there was like a documentary, like a mini documentary, I think it was done by Nike with Trent. A few, a few must have been a few months back, and what was fascinating was, it, I suppose this is how the world of football works: is that he went back to the academy, and obviously he knew a lot of the staff and that sort of thing. And he was like, "Oh, how's Stephen?" He was like, "Oh, yeah, he's an estate agent." Or like, "How's uh, yeah. you know?" It's just the so, yeah. most mental way that suddenly yeah. well, everyone's funneled into that academy. And then, of course, people don't make it. Of course, people then suddenly have in inverted brackets normal jobs. Yeah. But it's just weird seeing yeah, that Trent yeah, was there. I, it next... was a little, it was a little the YouTube vit film, wasn't it? Yeah, I was it. in it actually. I was in the, I had a little. I've seen you and Kate in the office thing, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, and I was in the one before that. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I did a little interview. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was for. I can't remember what it was for. Was it behind? I can't remember behind the scenes or something. Yeah. But, so but fascinating how. Yeah. It, this is the thing you've got to so what it is is the what it is is saying to you like as before before we came on air you've got to make sure the kids have a great time because there is such a drop off isn't there so when they have the when they're at the academy make it a great experience make them have all unbelievable you know opportunities you know go really good you know tours and things like that because at the end of the day five you know what is it five percent get a scholarship don't they so it is a big drop off from the big kind of yeah. big clubs or yeah yeah, no, it's to be honest with you, it's quite a there is quite a drop off. So for us at the academy, we just want the kids to have a great time, and it can't be a paper round. It can't be like going to school. You've got to love to do it, haven't you? Mm. You've got to want to play footy. And let's be honest, with you, if you're playing footy as a kid, you're happy, aren't you? Yeah, of course. You know what I mean, you've got to put away all the things about you know Ferraris and things like that. It's not about that. It's just playing footy with your mates, really. Mm. It's, it must be hard though, because balancing that, having a good time, and also instilling that. I don't know, like that like competition, the that need ethic. to win. And that, yeah, because yeah. there's a fine, but like you said, it's a fine balance between... I think the, there's ages, isn't there? So when you're like, to, at the end of the day, if you've got a kid in the academy, 
you know, when you're seven, six, seven, eight, nine, you, do, you know, and some parents go, well, he's not in that team, he's not in this team, things like that. But at the end of the day, you're just watching your lad play, aren't you? And it's yeah. all about, you know, whatever your lad's name is, it's, that's the team you support, isn't it? It's not really about teams and it's about individual development, isn't it? Mm. And that kid, and if you're a really good parent, you can keep all the, um, you know, you can keep all the negativity away, can't you? Because you honestly, I think, there's some unbelievable parents who really, really clued up and know it's not, you know, don't get carried away. I think there's, there's a, and you know, and like in everything, isn't it? There's, there's really daft parents who, you know, oh, he's going to buy me a Ferrari. You know, they are, they are, they are <laughs> parents you know? like that. But the majority, the vast majority of parents are really, really clued up and, and share, you know, keep the kid on feet on the floor and make sure that they, you know, they know that they're not going to, you know, this, it's not doing nothing silly. But, you know, I think the, you know, it's like everything, with, you know, some footballer does something wrong, it's all over the press, but all the good they do, they don't say, do mm, they? Yeah. And it's a bit like that. There's some, some really, really, really clever parents who know the score. I think like, don't, don't put too much, sorry, mate, yeah. don't put too much pressure and just, look, yeah. just have a nice time yeah. and then, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's the worry that I sometimes think, you know, there's that much money in the game now. The, I guess the two questions to put here is one, has it gone from kind of being when I was a kid, and I'd play footy on the street and in the park and I'd imagine scoring the winning goal in the Champions League final. Has it gone from that being the dream to, I can't wait to buy a mansion, I can't wait to buy a car. Can you see that in kids? Or? I think, I, I'll be honest with you, it's like, so, no. He said, so Alex Inglethorpe, who's at the academy, he massively just says to the kids, L you play for Liverpool because you'd love the game and you should always concentrate on loving the game. So love of the game, all the other things come you know a second to aren't they mm. so so because it does all that sort of comes later but if you're a 13 year old kid you know it's just about loving the game of footy isn't yeah it? that's what scares me you know that these 13 year old kids because of social media now and they can follow the favorite players you know when i was a kid you know i used to you know go and go and knock a carriger's mars out my house and get an autograph uh -huh. you know in bootle that's that's the closest i got to seeing what carriger did was uh -huh. to see his ma now you can watch these players on instagram and they can see the flash cars, they can see the nice house, and it just scares me to think. It doesn't scare me, it just makes me sad to think. God, I, when I was growing up, I used to think, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to, you know, be mates with Carragher or Gerard and see what they do now. But you know, you know, when you say, I, I sort of think of that, like, you know, I said to you, though, you know, when before we were on air about, like, you know, do you make it a fantastic experience? And, you know, I think you know, to, when they do leave, the kids miss it. But, you know, let's be honest now, a lot of parents, you know, I think back when I was a kid, the things that parents do for kids now is unbelievable. The parents are so supportive. They're really switched on. They, you know, they really care about what, you know, the mental health and things like that. Mm. You know, there are, you know, there's some fantastic parents out there. Mm. You, know, the, 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 you know, the vast majority are really good parents who can see all the pitfalls. And I guess it's the parents' job to then, if they do see the kid going off the rails, yeah. focusing on the wrong things like the money and the cars yeah, and the house. You know, and you know, look, there's massive things like you know, most clubs now have a psychologist. The you know, the, the, really, the, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, they're all, and it's all about mental health now, massively. You know, there's you know, there's alumni pro programs for the kid players who don't make it. There's massive things are getting put in place now. It's you know, it's really educated now. Mm. It's, and and it's, I bet the cyst you talk about like money and cars and that sort of thing. I imagine the system windles that out anyway because if you're just doing it for that, it's, yeah. it's not judged on that. Obviously, it's yeah. judged on performance, yeah. and performance is not related to yeah. you thinking I want a nice cut. So that 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 the academy automatically filters that out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you've what it is is you've got to, you know, if you, you know, it's like things sometimes like you know when you like have the Americanisms about if you work hard you get there. It's all that. at the end of the day you can work as hard as you like. If you haven't got talent, you don't get there, do you? Mm. The weird talent gets dropped a lot, and it's not about the American dream. You can if you work hard, it all it happens. It doesn't. I hate that. Mate. <laughs> I love. I love it's the, so true. It doesn't. It doesn't happen. You've got to have talent. On that yeah. quote, mate. the talent will get there. I love, I love it, mate. Exactly what you said. I love, there's a quote that says, "The most determined woodpecker will not get through a lamppost." <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what I mean? Really? I don't care how determined you are. How, how, you know, you could be there, turn up five minutes early. You know, an hour early. You could stay an hour after. T if you're <clears throat> not good enough, and it's all about talent. Yeah, yeah, of course. Talent, and it's about athletic ability. The only thing I would say, what I've learned over the the last twenty, twenty three, twenty four years, is that. To almost play for Liverpool now, you you know you've got to be almost an Olympian. It's really, getting yeah. that way, I think personally. 
think you've got, you've got to have the physical attributes to get there and the mental strength, but physically, it's that, that was some of the questions we got, got asked a number of times. We go through the questions at the end, so we probably end up covering all. But since you brought it up, people are saying how much of it you're looking at as a young kid, thinking and he's going to be a monster when he's older. How much of it goes into not, he, not so much, not so much size. So for me. Uh, it's hard to explain this because it's like just experience uh, for me it's it's body movement run uh, agility you can see more I think you can see more out of a young child and you'll make it about five six seven with the ag agility body movement how they move how they can adjust how they can, how they leap things like that at that age you're spotting it yeah uh, because I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, mate. You probably will tear me by the end of this chat. But I'm one of these people. We're going. How the fuck are you picking a kid up who's five? How can you tell it? Like, well, you, well, everything. You know, so anything that you do in life. So if we, so if you've got ten people in the room, one person will be really, really good at flicking a coin, and there'll be one person in that room who flicks the coin the best. So everything that you do has a best. So then, when you open up the circle, from like local kids. To this, to forty minutes, to fifty minutes, to sixty minutes, to the country, you get better and better. So someone in the room's got to be the best. So the best five-year-old. There, there are kids who are. So you got to be careful. So, so if you're September birthday and you're playing against August birthday, yeah, you got to remember that's like being under sixteen, under thirteen in the month of the year. So you've got to be really, really conscious of the uh, the you know the the year bias. So the courses of the year, what they're coming from, but someone's got to be good. So I have honest, we do look and we can see. It's He's mad that though, isn't it? Yeah. I think at that age, so I've got a six-year-old now, and I do you think that you can spot I, I, a movement I, or like a someone's running. I think I can. We've got we can get them under six kid, and you think scholar. I don't care what anyone says. You can. Really? Yeah, I don't. I think you can. I don't care what anyone says. You can. And how often are you seeing a five or six-year-old, and you go, yeah? They're, they're, they're it. Every day. Really? You see them all the time, they come in all the time. That's what your job is. But when I say they're it, I mean... The next trend. Yeah. Obviously, you can't tell at that age, I guess, can you? But you can, you know... You can't tell at that age, but you can see the attributes and that's what your experience tells you. So there's kids that you look at now and I think, ooh, he he's, he's, he could be better than Trent. Really? Sorry, Trent. <laughs> Could you send them this podcast? Yeah. It would really help. Us. Hopefully, you're good. hopefully you're not listening to. Um, yeah, because I've always been one of them. No way can you. And I, I had Sars when I was. So a we kid are. Let's look beginning. at the team now. So if you look at the team, so at the minute, Kata six, Reese eight, Nico six, Trent six. They're all six years of age when they came into Liverpool, and they've gone to the first team. So there's other kids in the groups that are all doing that as well. So kids who were really young so seven of the boys who played against Shrewsbury were from Liverpool's pre-academy so and with kids being kind of that good now then that's you know at that age <sighs> again I'm not trying to I've had to get any parents who are listening to this who do this with the kid but I'm thinking if you're if they're getting picked up by you if you're seeing a young six year old they've, they've got to be playing a lot of football surely at before then are you, are you finding like the parents are, are pushing them to think right come on you need to be getting picked up can, can you see that pushy parents up until that age where maybe you can do but then what you do is just, you just do where you sorry before because where you've said then once they come in the academy it's about fun are you finding maybe there's not that fun there until kind of you get involved where you're seeing parents going right come on we need to get you signed up we need to get you signed up yeah you do get that but what you do is as you get into the academy system you educate the parent don't you so as you when you when you get a parent whose dad's like kicking every ball, pulling all kinds of faces, got his head in his hands and all that, and you go and look at thing he's dad there doing that, but you know, they do that, but then you educate them and then they get used to it and then they they become used to it. You know, it's like it's a bit like when you're a footballer and you're gonna make your debut and your bottle's completely gone and then five years on, it's your job and you do it, don't you? Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like that with the parents. So when the parents first come in they're all and then, then, then as it goes on, they realise and then they understand. Mm. And then you educate the parent to become, uh, you mm. know, to be, to be, you know, elite parents as, as much as elite player, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah. So. Are you finding as well that parents are, 
That sounds a bit daft, but with with the amount of kind of football that isn't at the moment, you look at the likes of like Neville and Carragher on Monday Night Football, you, you tend to find that, because I'm just thinking back when I was a kid playing Sunday League, and it was just fucking, you get the ball left back, and it was just fucking fire it down the line, <laughs> and, and that was it, you know, and I'm yeah. looking at kids now and parents, and it's, you know, the in-depth analysis that goes in, I'm guessing... Sunday League is probably at a higher standard than it was when I was younger. You know what I mean? No, what it is now is you'd have like so Cruyff turns. You know, you do a, you know different types of players and the old things what kids do, and you are amazed what the kids can do. So we play, we play small four v four, three v three, two v two games, and indoor, and it's like really really intense. So some of the games in our under eight games are like. Whew, you know, really? it, it, it sometimes, yeah, you know, get really, really feisty. Like, do you remember when you so when you were a kid and you're playing four v four in the street, and you got a thing? You know, the day you didn't get a foul, did you? The only way you got a foul is you run after it. You, it's my ball. I'm getting a foul, or I'm going in. Okay, you have a foul, but no one got a foul, did they? Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless it was blatant. So you know, but that's what it's a bit like. That's what it's got to be like. Because that's if you think about it, we need to go back to the days where there's too much structured football. And it can't be, well, you know, passed away to B to C. So it needs to be street football. The kids teach themselves. They all evolve themselves. You don't take their personality out of them. And that's the big thing. We're really big on not taking the personalities. So let the kids develop themselves and don't tell them how to play. Mm. So you don't want to say, right, you're a right back and you're six. You can't, you can't, you can't be telling anyone. They haven't even played 11 side football. You can't tell a kid what position he's going to be until he's played 11 side football. Mm. So, from the years, from uh, from five to 11, you only play seven a side at the maximum. So, there straight away, it's not proper football. It's just kick about football. Mm. And it's got to be that. You don't want structured football. At the end of the day, if you have structured football, you end up taking the creativity out of the player. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so makes sense. On that. What, what, is your, like, what does your day to day job look like at the academy then my day-to-day thing is to organize the experience in the pre-academy so then six seven eight nine five six seven eight nine they go on you know to organize the the um, the experience to um bring the, the players in so we'll have constantly bringing players into the academy we'll have a we'll have a like a um a, a fluid group so we have like a base of kids and then kids four or five will come in, right? We need to, uh, some need to be released now because the group's getting bigger. So then we'll, you know, we gradually kids will go, go, keep coming in, keep coming in. And then when you get to under eight, you can offer them a contract to sign. So At eight? Eight years of age, yeah. And what will that three. contract look like for the... It's just a one year rolling contract so that you, you, um, Again, it's a, it's an, it's a necessary thing because if you think about years ago and when I was younger, anyway, if you were a really really good player, you played more nearly every day, didn't you? Mm. And you played for this team, you played for that team, you played for you know you played six seven games a week. So they, that's why they brought it in to stop that happening because so kids don't get injured. Or? Yeah, don't get injured. You don't overplay. You can only play for one club. They know where you are. You know, because years ago there was no structure in place. You and kids were getting repetitive knee injuries, ankles. So it was brought in so the kids only played thirty games a year. They didn't overplay. They didn't get injured. And you know, people forget that's why the academies came in because there was that much overplay from younger players. So if you look like I think Rob Jones didn't he? Rob Jones played that much football. He was an old man at like twenty nine, wasn't he? Mm. And everything had gone on him. So that was it. Was brought in to stop all that. And the you know the academy systems, there's you know listen, there's problems with every system, but at the end of the day, you know you go in and you play. It's a safe environment. There's not effing and jeffing. There's not fighting. There's not anger. You know there's not fellas screaming at you on the line. It's neat. You know that's that's the way it you know mm. it's got to be. And are you now now that you've you know you've been in the game really you know 24 years? Are you at a point where it's it's more or less impossible if a kid hasn't been picked up by say nine eight nine. 10. No, no, I wouldn't say that. I think because um, you have different kids, you know, migration and uh, you know, it, like you got a lot of immigrant kids and things like that. I would say that you need to be in the system by like third. So it's different. So in London, so because you've had a lot of massive migration, I think you get a lot of players who who will come in later on. And in the northwest of England, you know, you need to be in the academy, say like twelve or thirteen. So I brought John Flan in. John Flan. If Liverpool had the system now, John Flanagan would have been in Liverpool earlier because they only had small groups at the time. 
um, when the group expanded to, to 12 to like a 16 man group John Flan got in then and obviously he went to play on for the first team captain mm-hmm. for one team didn't he but West Brom away so now we are, we've got groups like 30 and we sign like 20 or 25 children uh, which and then they, so what you do is you have a group of 25 kids who are all completely different and then they play games with each other and they bring each they bring themselves on because mm. every in India you'll have big kids you'll have little kids you'll have little tricky kids you'll have athletic kids so when you play so every game 5v5 or 4v4 that you play you've got it's a challenge and you've got to work it out you've got to work out your opponent even if you're playing like a little a little, a little tiny kid mm. you can't keep fouling them you've got to learn to play and play around them you've mm. got to learn to you know what I mean so the group you know evolves itself and with with the kinds of parents, because I'm imagining if you've got thirty kids coming through at a certain age, what's it like? I mean, do you, do you feel a well, yeah for you personally? What what is it like when you've 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 got scouts the kids Sunday league? You say to the parent, look, I want you to come down to Liverpool. Let's say the parents a little bit. Mm, I don't really know. Not heard great things or for whatever. I don't really want them to get too serious. And you're saying, look, come on, he, you know, he love it, it'd be great. And then come eight when it comes to get a contract. The kid's now got his heart set on Liverpool and he doesn't make it. So And you've got a parent going, well, Ian, I didn't want him to do this. Now he has. Now he's got his heart set on Liverpool. <laughs> What's going on here? No, so what you would do, to be honest with you, so obviously there's levels in football, isn't there? So what you would do, you try and make the best decision. Because what happens is as you're bringing the kids in, the kids keep coming in, keep coming in. You, you can sign kids from an hour. So what you do is you help them parents. You So if I was to ring someone at another club, and say such and such has done really really good he's a good player he's not we we, we you know our numbers are high we you know he's not quite the right not play for us then would you take him and they snap our hands off so we try to help every boy so in our age under age group get get a, get a team and i'll be honest with you it's, it's very rare that they don't get one because if you're at liverpool at under eight then you know you're at a decent level you. and you're going to get somewhere and obviously that's why there's, there's, a, there's a chain of clubs, isn't there? And a pyramid of clubs, so where you go. Mm. And don't get me wrong, some kids, you know, like I just said to you, I mentioned it before, some kids are immature as, as compared to other kids. Some kids don't have the game understanding that they can, you know, they can get that later on. But, you mm. know, at the end of the day, you, there's, there comes a time or a sort of um, a, a cut off where you have to make a decision. Mm. You know, you're going to, the, uh, the thing in my job is you're always going to make mistakes, but try to make it as least as you can. You get, everyone makes a mistake, don't they? Mm. And that cut off thing. So, like, when, when do people? When do people then get cut off? As so, such, like? so you're allowed to offer it. You're allowed to sign an under eight player with a year three, the third week of May. And then we have a sign. We have a we have a big signing day. Remember, the kids have a big signing day because they can't. They never sign another contract if they're successful. So Trent would have signed that um, under under nine under year three under eight and he would never signed another contract till he was 16 right that's his scholarship so you are taking him out the sunday league and you are taking him out the cup finals things like that but then you are giving him a fantastic experience like you go and you know playing all over europe in tournaments and things like that so i think if you talk to trent now about like um his best experience he'd probably think back to his sunday league and, yeah, so. and that 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 contract at eight years old, that there's, there, there, people don't get paid at eight, do they? No, no, no. they get so paid. No. So it's, it's the just, only thing that some people will do is you'll get tra- you'll get like travel expenses. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you're a multi-millionaire million club like Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, and you want these parents to bring the kids three nights a week, four four times on a Sunday, you can't expect them to be out of pocket, can you? So if you're travelling mm. here, there, and everywhere, you know, the, you know, all you get is business travel miles, nothing else. And then when they do get the scholarship, that is when potential yeah, offering, like like payments, come in of like, re- yeah, well, like you, housing yeah. or yeah, what, what no, no, you get so there's all reg- rules and regulations for what you can and can't do now because obviously it's uh, you know it's like it's all rule and regulated. You can't do that. You can't you can't give them housing like that. All you can do is they get the the years you know YTS and they all get everyone gets the same then on the 17th birthday they're allowed to negotiate a professional contract but that's all that's different to, to so, so the big clubs when when there's a you know a, 
a young centre like you know Wayne Mooney when he was coming through. There's none of this kind of the clubs in the northwest going to the parents. Yeah, there's a like we when we had the football agents on, he was saying about you know agents to say oh I can get you this boot deal or I can get you that. You don't get clubs going. We'll we'll put you up in a house if you, you know we've, we found this worldy kid from Scotland. Yeah, well, you can do there. you can do things you can do things like that can happen, but it's all got to be done above board and it's done. Like, so like like Liverpool have a house, you know, a house parents where the the, the kids stay in a house parents. Yeah, right. Him done that, didn't he? Yeah. So when you um, if you're younger, you can do that, but when you're a professional, then you can do whatever you want. But when you when the children the seventeen on the seventeenth birthday, they can't. You know, everything's regulated. and You can't. Mm. It's all made sure that the money isn't there. It doesn't ruin the kids, and everything's put in place to make sure the feet's on the floor. It's a good idea because you can see how that. Yeah, you can <laughs> see. Well, years ago, I, I can remember. So Jimmy Aspinall, my father-in-law, told me years ago there was a couple of yeah, you know, funny video, but like in Western now. So two twins years ago, I don't know who they are, but um, I couldn't tell you the names. But he just told me a story that he was working for Derby. There was two twins in Weston, lived in Weston. And um, everyone was after them. So Jimmy went, Jimmy went to the house with um, um, what's his name, Tommy Doherty. He was a derby. Want to get these kids? And I've got to be careful what I say. I'm going to get libelous for Jimmy's not alive now. It's Tommy Doherty, so I'll be okay. And then Jimmy said, "We're we're third in, Jim. We're third in to go to the house." He went, "Okay." So then someone I don't know of the clubs went in. Then they went in. Then the, the, Tommy Doherty. So Tommy Doherty walked in. He had a, he had an attaché case. With a thousand pounds in it, and he said, "What I've done, Jim? All in one pound notes." So he had it all like trade out, and he said, and "He walked out and signed the kid." So, them things don't happen anymore. No, <laughs> but that's what was happening, yeah, yeah. and that's in the seventies. Yeah. Well, I was, if you pick a gem like a Trent, and you've got an opportunity at six or eight to get this this gem of a player then you can see why that's going to happen can't you like, yeah but then all the, yeah but that's you know and let's be honest you gotta see this is what doesn't happen you gotta hold your hand out and say right you know everyone is acting you know in the right the right manner no one's doing that now it's not there's all regulatory bodies in place now to stop anything that happening mm. it is the, cra- the crazy years have stopped it's all in place that you know the kid signs for where he's happiest mm. and you know that contact he signs at eight you're saying it's to stop him playing more football than he should be. Is it to stop other clubs coming in, or can that player still? No, I think what it is, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Because at the end of the day, if you so if years ago, if you were a really good player, uh, they didn't have this in the place, the games in, program in place. Now that's only been going in, that's only been going since 1998. So you could, you, you wouldn't play. You just play for all the different Sunday league teams. You wouldn't be attached to anyone. You couldn't sign an associated <laughs> schoolboy form till 14. Mm. So Steve McManaman would have played loads and loads and loads of footy. Some people might say that was a good thing, but uh, imagine now if you couldn't sign a contract till fourteen, it would be like the Wild West. Mm. It? <laughs> but I mean, can other it clubs, would be like the Wild West, wouldn't it? Can other yeah. clubs still come in though? I'd say no, they can't now because from Cat One to Cat One, it can't happen anymore. It's not allowed to happen. So the regulatory bodies now, you, you know, if you if some team went to this really good player, say like Manchester United wanted to take someone from Newcastle United, it can't happen no. unless Newcastle agree to it. They can do it through the front door and do it like a transfer, but you cannot. They can't move around now. It's not allowed. It's no skullduggery. It's good that I suppose that they cap that that at seventeen. You know the ability to then because yeah. then. When would it end? It would, you know, it would then next minute an eight-year-old's getting signed for <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, like five hundred grand. So this is what, <laughs> but this doesn't get talked about, does it? There's all regularly bodies in, so that it stops all the craziness, and then you get all the silly stories about all this, this, this. And, but at the end of the day, you can't do, you can't be given, you know, a hundred thousand pounds to an eight-year-old. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you're not allowed. It's it's all regularly bodies, and if you think about it, things like so. Let's talk so. Met Lionel Messi left Argentina at 13 and went to Barcelona. Them, that is legal. You cannot do that. So that can't happen now. Really? No, it's not allowed. It's not allowed to happen. Wait, not. so did, he didn't get any money or anything like that, or did he? Or <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. You, you can't take it. So if you think about all the Spanish clubs that got um, all the things that happened to them, it's because they were taking boys from foreign countries right, to we, Spain yeah. and you're not allowed yeah, to do yeah. it so obviously it's different for England because it's uh, we've got a really strong immigration policy haven't we but some countries haven't got that have they mm. so you're Makes at a disadvantage sense. so Brexit's going to kick in now so be interested to see what Brexit does no one knows 
Mm. But do you think it'll have a big impact then on the... Massive. Really? Massive. In what sense? Just the, the scouting that goes on for young kids over Europe? It just means that um, English players become, you know, more important. So, you know, it's not like it's not a single market. So if you want to sign someone, a 16-year-old from Barcelona, uh, from Naples, from Stockholm, you can't do that anymore. Just because of immigration, uh, immigration and Brexit, so we're not we're not part of the common market now. Yeah, of course. So you know where you could you can't sign a sixteen year old Brazilian mm. because you couldn't get into the country. You've got to work there. So we're going to be like that now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So That's something I've not even thought about with football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about that when uh, Brexit. This is what I'm saying to you, though. So when you say about like you get a lot a lot of people in football get you know get bad publicity, there is a lot of things in place to stop the children. They are children, and it stop it from being. You know, no one wants to grow up like Michael Jackson, do they? And mm. these all the Premier oh, League, mate, yeah. the I FA, and everything. So all these things are put in place to stop it all. But the, no one wants to give. It's boring to say regulatory bodies are doing a really good job and they're saving the kids from getting taken away from the mother's arms, aren't they? But no one. Yeah. No, but no one wants. It's boring to say that, isn't it? Mm. But they are. There's, there's really good parameters put in place to stop all this. I suppose you, you, it's just like you just said. You just never hear of it because it just doesn't no, sell stories no. or anything like that. No, it doesn't. It's, no, it's like it's, it's, it's like any industry, yeah, isn't it? You don't yeah, hear about regulation yeah, in any industry no, until you're actually no, within it and you go, no. actually, fair enough, it works and X, Y, and Z. It's so. like us are sitting here. I, I don't know about you, but you know, we want to. You know, I just want to play for Liverpool for none. That's what you like, aren't you? When you're yeah. a kid. I don't care. I don't want to. You know, I, I don't care. Give me ten bob a week. I'll play for Liverpool. But then, <laughs> obviously, the, the, the world's not like that, is it? No. <laughs> So no. that's what it's you know what I mean. So yeah. you know, I wouldn't even want to be paid. That's what people say, don't they? Yeah. Have, you, have you seen that then with the kind of with the you know with the the job that you've done and you kind of done done your best to keep the kids from the ages of six and you've done the best to keep the family in check and you think you know really great kids. You must have seen some sad stories then when it gets to sixteen, seventeen, and then they get the first big checks. And then the kind of hard work maybe you've done. I don't know, let's say maybe a bit of a dodgy agent. Well, I, I'm sort of away from that a little bit because that sort of gets took over because, you know, of the agents and, you know, people like that move in. And it is, you know, you've got to keep it, you know. But it, it is, there is, you know, stories where you, people make the wrong decision, you know. But to be honest with you, I'm a stupid daft Liverpool fan. Anyone who leaves Liverpool, I think you're crazy, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I'll be honest with you, I, I work for Liverpool, I recruit for Liverpool. And if a parent doesn't want to sign for Liverpool, I am thinking hold on a minute, they can't be right. <laughs> and I am, you know, if you keep that mentality, I think it, it helps you in your job, doesn't it? Yeah. I just really. think if you don't want to sign for Liverpool, you don't want to play for Liverpool, hey, you must be crackers. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I think maybe I've got that eight-year-old in my mind that I think like that. So, you know, I just can't understand why you wouldn't want to, you know, you go to Anfield and you watch Liverpool play and you just think, oh, imagine if you could be there. Mm. And, you know, you get unbelievable moments. Like I remember Flan Flano's first de that, um, debut. And honestly, God, you like kicking every ball. Yeah. I was absolutely knackered like him all the game. And his dad rang me and he was going, Oh my God, oh, you like, oh. And we were like, we were in bits because it was like, we won 3 0, didn't we? Andy Carroll scored the worldy goal, remember? Like the shot. We beat City 3 0. Oh, was that his uh, oh, yeah. first debut? Yeah. Oh, I was honestly, God, I was like knackered after that. And then what is that feeling like when you've when you uh, known so someone from six years of age? Well, you know, if you're a Liverpool fan anyway and you watch the games, I'm nervous. I get nervous every game anyway. I'm terrible for it. I'm like, right, nah. But when you've got a kid who you've brought in yourself playing, it oh, just turns the screw out ten times more. <laughs> and then, Must you know be some I mean? feeling that, I think. <sighs> yeah. You know what? It's like with Trent, when Trent played in the... Um, he played at Kiev. I, got, I don't know what it was. I don't know what. I just got a bit nervous before Kiev. You know, people were going, "Well, he's going to play against Ronaldo. He's only a kid. They might put Klein in." And I got a bit nervous about it. I was thinking, I don't know why. I just did. And then when you walk, and I walked into Kiev, and he was on the pitch, and he was going to play in the Champions League. Honestly, God, it was like unbelievable feeling. You get like proper <sighs> emotional about it. And I'll be honest, I've got no bad feelings about Kiev at all. Didn't even think like feel that like we lost the game. No, because he's like played in the Champions League final. Mm. So you've got like a little kid who, like, I was his manager under under. He was played for my country, but country part team. I was his manager under seven, under eight, and then you're walking into the European Cup final. And he's on the pitch, you're thinking, oh my god, it's just unbelievable feeling. And then when he won it, and then I was, you know, he honestly, yeah, he paid for me to go. He got me the you know flight to go, and I spent. I went with the family, and you know, and we went to that oh me oh my, we yeah. were on top of the roof of that. And um, it's funny, you know, because uh, so his mates are there, and his, his mum 
and his brothers and that. And uh, when we when he come round the corner and he's got the cup, he said, Trent's got the cup and then his mind got all emotional, you know, so I started crying and all that and she went like over there like that and uh his, the, the, the tense mates went, Oh, are you all right? I was like, Over here, I'm not going over there. I'm going to get all emotional. Like, yeah. I just stood in the corner on my own, I think, because it was, it was real. Honestly, God, I was like nearly in tears. Can you imagine, mate? Unbelievable feeling. And then when we went, we went back to Anfield and he said, Come here, we'll get a photo with the cup. And I walked over, and honestly, God, I've got a picture on the cup, I've got it on my phone. And you're like, Proper. I had to go and have a stand in the corner, have a way with myself. No, I did you really? Yeah? Oh, it was proper, like, proper. Oh, bloody hell. Just because of all those years of seeing him on the football pitch, it's and just, it just it's unbelievable. To... Well, you know, it's like you know, you've got players you've come through, you've got Flano and and things like that, and you've got Steven Gerrard, you've got Cara and the great players. But it sounds like won the Champions League, you know, from Country Park on the sevens. I've got a picture of him, like he's got like Country Park Player of the Year. The next thing he's like, you know, they're saying he's the best right back in the world, and he's playing in the Champions League, and you're thinking, oh my God, there's the, is that, is that on the phone, thing? yeah, this that one, one that one, yeah. So after ju- that, just on just on Trent specifically, then when he played for you, how did you end up getting him for like Sunday League? Just like you, I don't know, your son's kind uh, of mate or something. Or so what happens? No, what, he, what it is is he, we had like a school program, and um, they came in. So Flano School, he, it's funny enough, Trent went to Flano School, the same St Matthews. So I, Flano's dad yeah, said, yeah, no, oh, no, go on no, no, in there, in there, oh, it's on the drive, St Matthews on, and there. Uh, John Flano's dad said to me, "Can you get our Jonathan's team in the in the school tournament in the in the thing?" He went, "Yeah, okay, yeah." The last thingy, so I asked the lads. They got to give, they got them, got them in the games. So when they when they um, they played, I went in and watched the games. And uh, the the teacher from Saint Matthews was there, and I went to me, "Are have you got any little ones in this?" He went, "Yeah, yeah." So yeah, here's the forms. So what to do? The kids ring through all the forms, and then they send them in, and then they get invited in. So Trent got invited in from the back of John Flan's half, like give me the forms, I give it to him. So then Trent came into the like the, the, like soccer Saturday thing and then he got sent to my development centre. So he comes to my development centre and I was thinking after like ten, five minutes thinking, Oh my god, this kid's unreal. You know what I mean? I'm thinking so I went back over to the man and went, Are you sure you should be? You shouldn't be in the proper academy then. But Trent was too young, so we didn't have a group then. So we had to come into the development centre. So after that, I went back to the man about three or four times, and she she says now she goes, oh my god, who's this who's this who's this not bad fella? <laughs> Keeps coming back over, but he was really good. So I said, do you play for the team? She said, no, he messes around a bit. I said, he you know. So I had my team. I said, you can come and play for me if you want. If you haven't got a proper team, and she went, oh yeah, well, that's that's how it started. And so how old is he for that? Six. Six. Six, yeah. And so then, you were his first manager then. Yeah, first mm. manager. Yeah, I think he went to Saint Mag. I think he went to the, the Mags and did a little Saturday club. But I was his first manager. Yeah. So my little story I've got, which is uh, I said an article. I had um, he, the first game of the season. We had a scouts meeting. That's never ever unbelievable. Where we had the scouts meeting on the first day of the season because we should be watching the kids. So we had like a lad who was on Ireland's eleven school, Frank Kelly. So I said, Frank, I've got to go to the scout meeting at Liverpool. Will you uh, run the team? On the Saturday, on the Sunday, and all yeah, I said, yeah. So anyway, we're in that meeting all day. I phoned him about. I phoned him about one o'clock. I said, how'd you get on? He said, oh, we got beat two nil. I said, did you? And uh, mm-hmm. by, the, by the way, um, I went. So did you? Yeah. So don't, don't worry about it. He said, uh, I'll take the team next week. We'll probably win eight nil. You know what I mean? You, you shite, Frank. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> anyway, no, I don't think so. So anyway, look. The, the, the sad thing for Frank was Trent had gone away to his dad's. <laughs> With his mum, they got his dad worked in London. He'd gone down to London, so Trent never played. So the next week, I said, to, uh, uh, next week, we, uh, I was back. We're doing the game. So next thing, game um, we played, starting the game. You know, Trent, boom, 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 scored a few goals, and then Frank, that Frank came running over after his game. What score is it? I said, I think it's. I think they win about six, seven nil here. He went behave, and he went to the fellow mate. What score? He went about six or seven nil, <laughs> and uh, and Frank went. I said, see Frank, it's just my superior management skills. You're not, you know, you're not my level, Frank. And next thing, Trent gets the ball off the goalkeeper, beats about six players, knocks in the cup. One Frank went, where the bleed now was he <laughs> last week? <laughs> and it was Trent. He was the difference between the team. He just honestly got. He used to score seven, eight goals a game. And I was yeah, easy yeah. to say it now. You know, you, well, yeah, there was a photo there with you and him in the Champions League. Could you? Did you know he was going to the top, or did you think he's got a good, very good chance? Or could you just be like, nah, he's he's yeah. gonna. You know, when you look now, so that was that's a, that's twelve, that's what twelve, uh, fifteen years ago. So I was only like seven, eight, six, six, six years into being a scout then. So did I have the experience for it? I always remember a game though where we played, 
and we were like four or five, four or five nil up. And then Trent used to take the piss a little bit, so he used to take him off a bit or put him at the back because he used to dominate the games. And I, and, uh, I remember we got a corner, and um, I said to Trent, "Can I take the corner? Can I take the corner?" But we weren't like four, so I said to Trent, "Yeah, you can. But if they score, Trent, it's your fault." He went, yeah, yeah, I don't Because he was unbelievably competitive. <laughs> you know, you've never met anyone like it. Off, off his head. And um, so he, he took the corner. So anyway, he takes the corner. And then the kids, the kids um, get an unbelievable header and heads it out, heads it dead far. It's like, you know, bounces like, you know, it's only a small pitch, but it bounces about two yards off the halfway line. And their strikers like that. Next thing you can see Trent going from the corner. Fucking trying to get back, trying to get back. He's trying to get the next thing. The kid just gets ahead of Trent. And then Trent just goes, whoosh, whips him up. Takes him out. Uh, <laughs> Took him out. He's only seven, you know what I mean? You're thinking, this game understands was unbelievable. I just went to his mom. I'm telling you now, that kid will play for the first team. I'm telling you now. And she'll back me up and say that. But I should say that. But <laughs> it's like you said at the, at the start, there wasn't a bit. It's, it's that competitiveness, but you've got to be good enough. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be good enough and you've got to, you've got to have the mobility. And to be honest with you, this mobility is unreal. It's always has been. It's always been to run all day, really, really quick. Unbelievably determined. Mm. You know, if you don't, you know, if you, if you were in a training session, it was crap, or you're having a bit of a game with the kids, just give two penalties against Trent next thing in the world. Well, you know, you'd be like, ah. <laughs> and he, he just cause me, and he'd be like, ah, I hate I, him. I bet that's a benchmark now. So when you see all the kids, you like use Trent as a benchmark. Yeah. Is he... Well, you do. Yeah, as you go through, you do. You look yeah. at Trent. You look at profiles. You look at where kids are. You know, I, I you know, there's a, uh, you, you see the the athleticism of the kids who are coming in. Mm. And you see the levels of the kids. So when you see a really, really good under six, under seven player now, you look back and you think, well, the only the only thing where you've got to be careful of it is the level of this year, the academy level. So it takes a few years to get to the level. So you only really, the acid test really is when you play other teams at nine and you see the level of the group. So different groups will be different levels. But then, you know. Yeah. Are, there, are there any players, obviously, you Still very, still very close with Trent. Are there any players who you've you've brought through and you've thought they they, they should maybe make the first team, and they they haven't? Um, yeah, there's been quite a few players who, are, who you know what I mean, who are who you, you think maybe they could have. You know, things can go wrong, can't they? Um, you know, you know, think different things happen. Parents split up. You know, you know, like you know, like little we had like little Stevie Packer who uh, we signed in the April. Sadly, he passed away. Um, in the November, so things like that, you know. That, and you know what? There were some really good players in his group, but I personally think that the loss of Stephen affected that group. Mm. You know, and it's not many pretty kids have come through that group. You know what I mean? So things like that can definitely affect kids. You know what I mean? So I was always sad. shocked when um, when I come in in a couple of years, I was kind of working with the academy. It was the time when uh, like there was Brad Smith, uh, Ryan McLaughlin, yeah. um, Connor was there, Connor Cody, um, Jordan Ibe, so, uh, and Andy Firth, that kind of time. Yeah, and Brad Smith I'd seen in a tournament, he's from Australia, isn't he? Uh, mm. Yeah, I, seen, he, I spotted him in a tournament in Preston. Really? It's an Australian team. Strangely, when, so when you go up and you talk about the rules and regulations about kids coming in, his mum was born in Crosby. Really? So he could come and sign for Liverpool. <laughs> so we sold him for six million. We got him for nothing from a Sunday league game in Preston. And we sold him for six and a half million, didn't we? Too? Well, that, that, that's your job summed up perfectly there, isn't it? For every yeah. cent that you've got there, who's won the Champions League, that's obviously what you want. Yeah. But if you're not going to do that, yeah. I suppose it's like just... Ryan, like, so Ryan McLaughlin, you brought him from Ireland, did really, really well. He's had a few problems with injury. But, uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan's a really, really good player. So, you know, he's got his mate in the living in the game now. Hopefully he'll be able to go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. You've <laughs> <laughs> been giving, giving each other shit on Twitter before, have yeah. Well, yeah, at that time, and it, it just shows what I kind of know about about scouting. But I remember, um, I think it was actually sitting with you and uh, Clive and Caitlin, I think, at the, uh, the St. Helens game, a uh, ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was that? Was, 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 was that, was like, was that um, it's like the mini Europa League thing, Yeah, it was it? like, the, well, it was the thing in the Champions League, wasn't it? What was it called? It was called, um, well, Thingy Warbs won it. Warbs, uh, Organised it, you know the QPR manager. Right, okay. He was in charge. Of it was it. What was it called? I can't think. It was called now. Oh, you leave me for not telling me that. But he, he was his concept. Really. He all the teams, yeah. But I'd like go there, so I'd and be kind of you know, used to then follow them all on social media and stuff. And like you say, Brad and Ryan are making a living out the game now. But I'd look at them and I'd look at that Ryan McLaughlin and I'd go, he's surely gonna be, he's surely gonna make it. Or I'd look at that Brad Smith, dead pacey left back. I think surely he's gonna make it. 
and then they don't they don't make it to the, and I'm like Fuck, I must know not I mean I, I go everywhere watching Liverpool I think I've got a good knowledge of the game but then when you saw the players like even Conor Cody, Conor Cody listen he's captain of Wolves now but you're thinking Liverpool surely you know for instance you'd always knew that Conor would make it at some level because he's such an unbelievable character so when we go on about um, determination mm. um, motivation I, I think I've got to be honest I think Conor's got to be one of the the most dedicated nicest people hardest working genuine lads um, um, you know he's, he's, a, he's a great kid He's and so humble, isn't he? Speak yeah, to him he's now. He's well, so humble. You know, you know, he's a great lad. And to be honest with you, when you, it's funny you say that because when I was used to speak, speak to Connor, so when like, so when you had this sort of period of like young, young local lads, so in Connor's age group, it was a big influx of like players that we brought in from other other places. And you know what Connor did? He met the challenge, and they dragged him up to, to the level that he's become. So you know, Andre, I think it's like Andre Wisdom, Brad, and all them people like that, uh, Ryan McLaughlin, them age groups. When the kids that came into the group from, you know, from outside of the, you know, uh, outside of Liverpool, who were bought in, he met that challenge. Because remember, I had to, uh, Andre and um, Connor were going to, we were coming off a tour, and then they were going to meet England the next day. So I met them at the airport picked them up, stayed the night in the hotel and then took them took them to the England to the England flight. So that's what you had to do then. And uh, they went to when they went on and won the under seventeens World Cup, didn't he? Oh yeah, because Connor uh, was captain, I think, yeah, was he? Or? Yeah. I played them oh. both at pool as well and Tinata both of them that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, what so, is the difference? So, they don't remember that though, but I do. I clearly remember. <laughs> so Connor and Rondo Wisdom weren't very good at pool. <clears throat> what is the difference though from when you you're thinking or someone like me is watching and they're going, surely they're going to be getting the call up soon to the first team. Well, it's I, like I, if, it's fit, if you fit in the team, isn't it? So it's like if you fit in, so like look at Connor Connor's playing really, really well in a three, isn't he? Yeah. So if you're playing a four, four, two and you're a young lad, um, it's it's tough to make it through as a really young centre half. So if you look at Van Dyke, Van Dyke's like 29, isn't he now? Mm. So he's really come into the four, hasn't he, at 24, 25. Mm. So that's, it's tough to be a centre yeah. half, isn't it? And I think that's what, what Connor's done. Connor's gone out, learned his trade, got to a decent level. And then he's, uh, he's you know, he, you know he's, he's played for England now, hasn't he? Mm. Not that we care about England. <laughs> <laughs> I did try and find that. Uh, I think that might have been that's it. That's it, behind, behind the dream, behind yeah. The dream, yeah. So, yeah. Very good, that. Really yeah. good. And you know, obviously, the um, Melwood's moving to um, Kirby then. So, I mean, is that obviously it's brilliant because the younger players can then they won't be able to see the first team players, will they? Well, there's like so it's like the path, isn't it? You've seen the pathway at the academy, so that is the pathway, isn't it? So you've got to. So what they're doing is they're going to change the pitches round, and it'll be you work your way up towards that. So they're going to change the psychology. So you work towards that the new training ground where the pitches now the youngest pitches are here. At this end, you wear the other end now, and they're going that way. So you start to wait your way to the building, and you've got to wait your way up to there. Mm. So obviously, it all being in, you know, I think, let's be honest, the, the manager, Jurgen Klopp, has really give. He believes in the kids. If, you, if you're good enough, you get in, don't you? That's the thing, isn't it? You, if you're good enough, you get in. So I think at some other clubs, you're good enough, but you don't get the chance mm. because sometimes the fans want to, you know, they want. Oh, oh, just get him in, you know. You know, do you want someone from Argentina or someone from Spain or someone from Italy? Don't they? Is that the frustrating things as a scout? You know, your if your area is in Liverpool or the northwest, you know, you've got a great player, and then no, I, I think now under uh, Jurgen Klopp, I think if you're young, hungry, and you're, you're mobile and you, you want to learn, I think Liverpool's the place to be. I think he's give you know you've seen what he's done. He's given Nico a chance. He's given Curtis a chance. He's given Trent a chance, and. Last, only last week he's given Reese a chance so for me even if they don't go on to play 200 games for Liverpool that every day they're training with the, the world champions they're training with the champions of England mm. you know what I mean so you're going to get better aren't you I, yeah. I think what Jürgen's done as well uh, oh sorry boss the boss is saying that you know if you come and train with us and then the time comes that you need to go and be a, sometimes you have to go and learn to be a man, don't you? That it's not about. So the difference between academy football and uh, real football is that you could go to like play for uh, Blackpool, or you could go and play for Oldham, and all them players in that 
in that dressing room want the win bonus, don't they? Mm. Where you might get a young lad who's coming, he's on a few thousand pound, you know, he might be on more money than the them old pros, and he's going to get his money anyway. But they're sort of saying, "Listen, you, you need to do this." You need, and that's you need to learn that, don't you? You need to learn the graph, don't you? <clears throat> so it's like being on a building site and being the can lad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you need to have that. You know, I want to be a footballer. And you get the lads then as they're coming through. You know, you've been their first point of call. You know, you the likes of Trent or any of the lads. And it gets to a point where they get to maybe those tough challenges where the company, you know, they're 17, 16, 17 and they're coming up against the big barely 28 year old uh, and it's that like, do, do, you, do you have that kind of relationship still with them where it's like I, I, If I'm honest, no I don't because at the end of the day you're the agents, the older, the senior staff are there, if I more importantly I would be for the, I'm there for the parents, the mm. parents will ring me what do you think, uh, to have chats like that but you do sort of, you know you get left behind a little bit by that because of the, uh, there's so many people there but yeah, you, you know, you still, you know, Connor texts me, I text uh, Andre Wisdom, I text Ryan, mainly take the, pee, the piss out of Ryan, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I've got loads of, yeah, relationships with loads of the lads who've still played. But they, for, the, for me, it's like one of them, they've got to, they want to contact me, haven't it more, I'm not going to be running after them, like, you know, mm. who's it is. is. Is it hard to kind of, cause I get, imagine they're not like, they'll almost, they could potentially become like second sons, is it quite hard to watch them? You know, flee the nest a little bit. Uh, not so much. No, no, because you want them to. You know, you want them to do well and play. The only it is hard if you hear people criticise them. That's hard. You got to have to bite your lip. You know, you get someone who like might shout something or have a go at someone. Do you know what I mean? It's like we Connor come back. Remember Connor come back for Wolves and he knocked us out the FA Cup. Mm. Yeah, so he was kind of said one of the best days, isn't it? And I was like, that, you traitor. But you know, you're mates, but it's honestly, you're watching the game and you like want Liverpool to go through in the cup, but you're delighted that he's that he done that, you know what I mean? Because they've come back and he's done really well, hasn't he? Mm. You know, through gritted teeth, you're mates up that someone's come back. Yeah. I just think it's mad, isn't it, to think that you've you found someone at, at such an early age and then you look at Trent now, she's literally got the world at his feet. Mm. It's, it's just a mad feeling to think that then you kind of go, you know, obviously you still speak to him, but it's mad to go, right, yeah, there you are, come on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like, you know, the you, 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 obviously you're really, really proud of what they've done. And, they, you know, they, it's funny what's weird is, you know, when you think of him, you, you to think, think that he's a man, he's 22 now. And you just, do you look at him like he's an eight-year-old kid all the time? <laughs> and you've got to realise he's not, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's, that is, you know, it's weird, you know what I mean? But you do. It's more the parents. You get you're more close. You know, you get talked to the parents as well as the lads as well. Mm. But you know, so it's hard. To. Yeah, mate. So I texted Reese's dad the other day when after he played the Champions League. He said he he's a, forever a Champions League player now. And I said I mentioned the, the game where I spotted him in the Champions League in Manchester. It's like this like big competition. It's a way a big competition for local scouts. And his dad texts back the fixture. And who they played. I was like, weird. I didn't even remember that. But the dad remembers. It's so, crazy. Yeah, isn't it? God, what else? So proud. it's Cadley, Cadley Head. Cadley Head or something versus St. Helens Town. And he knew it on sex. I was like, weird. So good that you can start to talk to the parents because, like, you know, you're so proud. They're incredibly, immensely proud and just like sharing that together. That's pretty cool. That. Yeah. yeah it it's, it's a boss for you. Yeah. I is, bet it is. is Trent then the most. Um, your most successful prodigy then your most yeah successful yeah I'd player. say yeah yeah I'd say that <laughs> <laughs> who, who are the other kind of who's who are obviously the all not I was almost really really proud of Flano because Flano's been captain of uh, captain of uh, Liverpool he did the West Brom game away Brad Smith done really well you know you know Connor's not Connor's not so much why I bought got him but you know massive close, I'd have known Connor for years I've got photographs I remember going, Connor going to the game when he was like seven and eight um, you know, there's uh, Andre Wisdom. Uh, there's a few players. You know what I mean? Who've uh, done really, really well. Got themselves into good, good places. What's the? Um, what would you do then if, if Trent turns around and goes uh, five years time? He's one up on Ballon d'Or or something and goes. Ian, <laughs> Ian, I'm off to Barcelona. Let's go round and break his window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Mate. good. Should we get some questions then? Yeah, one of the one of the things we had. Um, People wanted that. Um, well, one one thing I'm thinking from going on your answers, there's going to be so many Sunday League dads. I'm thinking they were thinking, I run a footy team, you know. Uh, I can't be the next Ian Barragher now with my team. How is that kind of your kind of way into the scouting program? Is that 
the scum yeah the, still... for me the scum program is yeah it's like it, it's knowing the league knowing the standards knowing all the best players knowing all the best best teams and you know having a re you know you'd, you'd be surprised if you walked up to an under if i would walk up to some under 11 parents who's like my kid maybe plays for the school boys or plays for like a local team he'll know every under 11 more than i do mm. because they're ingrained in that sort of that's his bubble and they all have their own little bubbles of you know Mm. You get obviously you get a little bit where there are so you have like rivalries. So you'll have a team who's really good, and the dad go, they're all shite, but they're not. They've got good players, obviously, because they're a good team. But you get yeah, like, yeah. right little mini rivalries. But you have like little bubbles where you'll have little experts uh, at that particular age. Mm. I think someone actually didn't someone on the on the comments questions see if there was a job going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on best player you scouted, I'm guessing Trent. You'd so, say. Yeah. Um, when and how, when, how, why has modern day football changed from the Gaza days? I guess it's athleticism. It had to change, didn't it? Athleticism. Athleticism's the big thing. Really? Yeah, you know, um, you know, you put like, so if you do the stats on like the 1974 cup final and then you you, you followed everyone around and then you look at the, you know, the 90, you know, the two, like Liverpool's game against Tottenham, the kilometres the players ran will be vastly more mm. and the sprints and the, the you know the, uh, the you just see it man. so when you go back and you watch 1974 you're going oh my god they're walking yeah. <laughs> you don't walk now do you do you know what I mean <clears throat> what percentage of players that you scout will make it as a Premier League player well the stats are they say 5% 5 uh, get a scholarship so it's about 1-2% you know That's Premier mad, League isn't it? it is but if you think about it so I always think to myself to try and get me logical around it. So when Steven Gerrard played at Liverpool, the it was about 70% English, 30% foreign. And now it's about 33% English. Yeah. yeah, so that's why, because the world's opened up. Yeah, of course, so it makes sense. It's tougher to make it now. So it's a bigger achievement for Trent to play for Liverpool yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah of course, of the, makes sense. Yeah. There was one, can I just, just on, one sorry, here yeah. that says, um, I think we kind of answered, do, uh, do you think there should be more British talented youngsters given a chance at Premier League clubs? I think personally um, that goes by your manager. I think if you look at Liverpool, I think we have bought into that, haven't we? I would say that, but mm. you know, I think if you, at your club, even though you could be run by a foreign manager, it, you know, if you look at different clubs, we have, we have got a really strong English base, haven't we? Mm. So I think that we are the model, aren't we? Really? Yeah. yeah. You look up even even the you saw about British, you know, Robbo, Gomez, and Trent, three, yeah. three out of the four defenders. Ne Ne Nico, Nico, yeah, Curtis, Reese. I mean, so they've been given a chance, haven't they? Um, Glenn saying if you lost a few pounds, dusted off his shin pads. At the age of thirty-two, what are my chances? I think what you said before, like thirteen. If you're not in that mix at thirteen, then yeah, forget about it. Yeah, it's mad that thirteen. Yeah, yeah it's tough. Um, there's a few on Twitter as well. Let me just check that. Who is the most talented youngster? We've talked about that. Uh, yeah. And why do we why do we see so many European players in the in the academies of English teams and rarely hear of young English players being in the academies of Italian, German, and Spanish teams? Cost. It's cheaper to buy a foreign kid. Really? Yep. Why is that? Dead easy. Just because the um, you can well you know so for instance Bellingham has gone to Germany. Oh yeah. So one for cross Bruce border Dortmund. cross border compensation is buttoned. Right, is it? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, these are all similar questions. What are the questions we've? Um... And then obviously we've talked about Josh Pokington. What does a standard day in his job look like? Does he spend more? That's a good question. Does he spend more time out on the pitch or office? Um, well, I watch every session at the minute. I'm working seven days a week in Monaco because we've got COVID and we've had to spread all the uh, sessions across. So I don't get a day off at the minute. Um, really, my day is like talking to parents, talking to scouts, organising events. Um, generally, never off your phone. Um, you know, cause imagine I've so I've got like 180 kids to look after and 30, 35 staff. Hmm. 
So, because a lot yeah, of people, who, there's a lot of people who want a PC, in, isn't it? I always say, I, I can't remember what the reason. I was on LinkedIn for some reason. I saw how many people actually work for the club, and I, it was like two and a half thousand. You yeah. forget the logistics. Yeah. It was even like mm. the logistics of getting a team and the people who have to like organise flights, trains, just everything involved within a club. It's just yeah. like, it's a monster, like. Of uh, operation, yeah, it's massive. Insane yeah, things that you have to do. Right, there's one. That's an interesting one. So, someone like yourself or the other scouts, is there almost like a like a commission basis when your player makes it, or is your job? I don't. I'm not on commission now, um, sadly. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, you do. You get like if you if your player gets a you get a certain amount if you sign them, if they get a scholarship, if they get a professional contract. All different clubs have all different s- schemes. Makes sense. So it does. It breeds um, loyalty as well because if you stay with your club, and yeah. you get a payment. If you leave the club, you don't get the payment, do you? What are the main attributes you'd look for in a young goalkeeper? Um, I would definitely show you predicted height. Predicted height. Yeah. So you got to look at the mum and the dad. Really. <laughs> and see how tall they're going to be. Well, there's no one in the Premier League who's less than six foot two. I think there's a stat or something is there are only 6,000 men in the whole of the UK who are uh, six foot three. No way, 6,000. Yeah, Do you want like me to that. Google it? Google it, it yeah. It's, it's something <laughs> like that. So obviously uh, it's... Type it. How many... Just say, what, you know, uh, how, many, how many people in... in UK, how many males in UK are six foot three? I think it's about 6,000 or something like that. Would surely you look at like, you know, David De Gea or, you know, he's quite a young goal, uh, shorter goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two British girls like tall men, i.e. six feet. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, you know, when you go places and you look at things like so. Where, if you so, if you've been to Amsterdam, haven't you? Obviously, been to Holland, haven't yeah. you? Have you seen how tall Holland people are? Yeah, massive. And you know what the massive what problem noticed, for us is, Andy? There's not many. T- how, many have you, how many six foot three scouts have you met? Not many, no. There you go. That's a good point. I'm actually. five ten, me. I I think that's a not pretty a average scouse height. No, yeah, it's a, that would be a thing. So. <laughs> I've, and you know what I mean so there's not a lot of people you know who are over the height so, so what are you looking at you're looking to see a, a tall couple of tall scouts and thinking is they got this some yeah I, listened to, I went to this tournament for, I can't say the name went to a tournament about two years ago and we were in it was in Blackburn and we were in this like this indoor and the talent wasn't very good so I was just looking and then I was there I was just there to look at the, to see what the lads were there so I said to the, one of the um I went to the lads. See the mum over there, the blonde mum there. Yeah, the tall one. I love where you've got your eyes from the pitch there yeah, to the mums. Go, go there. So go, <laughs> go and see. No, go and see if they're lads here. Because she was so tall. She was so tall. Good shape. You know. You know. <laughs> so athletically shaped. I'd say that professionally. <laughs> so the the lad went. So I'm the boss. So I go. You go over there. And he went over and he went in. He went, oh, you know, he come back and he went, you're not going to believe this. Like, he's in Man City. He's a goalkeeper. He's under seven. Really? Scouts of the year. Scouts of the year. He was in Man City. He was, a, he was a, And he was the only player that day that was in an elite academy. And that, that was just by looking at the mum. Yeah. That's so, 20 odd years scouting. Yeah. What, um, maybe two, two young prospects and you thought one definitely make it. And you thought one's not got a chance, and it maybe kind of flipped well, it Reece, around. Reece, to be honest with you, yeah. Reese is definitely. I thought he was gonna. He was, I thought he had the massive profile to do it. I don't think at nine, nine, eight, nine, ten, people thought he would. But then I've always thought that looking at his mum and his dad's profile, that he would always be an excellent profile. And obviously, he's gone. He's gone on to do it, hasn't he? Just why can I just say here? <clears throat> you're not far wrong here. So right. percentage of people in height range, men, the average height is 174 centimetres, which yeah. is what, five foot seven, something like that. Yeah. That's the and average five seven. Yeah. Yeah, it must be, yeah. Five, yeah. five seven. Look at the net, look at that one I just said there about Holland. It's a bit sad when I know Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that's that. So as soon as you jump over, so if as soon as you jump. Look how, look how it drops. It just drops over six foot, doesn't it? So under three so percent. So if you think about like goalkeepers years ago, so they go on about Clements. So Clem, how tall do you think Clements was? He is. I don't know. Six foot one. Really? Yeah. It's not big enough. 
I remember Cooper who played for um, Ipswich. How tall is Alisson now though? Six six four. Is he? Six three, six four, yeah. Yeah, but there's obviously I again David De Gea. He's not hasn't been great now, six, but I think he's six. Nah, I'm sure he's over. He's under six foot. No, there's no way. No, <laughs> chance. Google no David chance. De Gea. No chance. Well, like you, what, what about the play? You know, you're talking about the like the things you pick. That's what a lot of people are asking. You know, what are the main things you're looking for? You know, well, you, you do get the likes of you know you. What's one point nine? <laughs> Love the way. What's uh, I, th- I think? What is one point nine? Six foot is two meters, just under two meters, isn't it? So you might. Here we go. One point nine two in feet. Oh, fucking hell. What have you done there? <laughs> Inches. What was it? Uh, so it's one point nine two centimeters into foot. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Hundred and ninety two. Sorry, we will I, get I there. Love we will get six there. Six, six, six foot two. Is it six, 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 six foot three. Yeah, six three. Wow. Okay, I stand corrected. But it is interesting going back to that chart where you say the Netherlands. Why aren't we having? Why have we not got scouts to Liverpool in in Holland looking for the ne- our next goalie? Well, we will have. You know, we'll have a scout. We'll have a scout there. But obviously, it's all the attributes, isn't it? What you're going to go for. So what do you do with a, with a player like you look at that like like Michael Owen when he was coming through you know a small player size isn't you know to be honest with you, size is nothing now so if you look at size it's not size isn't, isn't it's all about mobility if you're fast uh, you know you're you're quick you've got a great chance really yeah you, you know why he played it on our Sunday league and I'm going to sound so bitter saying this now saying that he, he didn't I didn't think he was that great he's obviously he was better than me and he obviously made a career in football but uh, I played against Victor and Nietzsche. Yeah. Uh, he played for a team called the Eagles. I played for a team called Beast, uh, Pavilion Panthers. Now, I was in one of those leagues where my team used to win the league. Um, uh, it was a, it was a, I can't remember the team I played for. Fairntree it was, sorry. My team used to win the league most most uh, seasons. And his team used to come like fifth or sixth. We weren't very good. But for this one or two seasons he was playing... They just absolutely hoofed the ball forward, and, and he just run. He'd win the race of the And goal. he was just—he was just very quick. He, he was—he was a lot bigger than us. He was a lot stronger than us. And I thought, yeah, but he's—he'd like, get tackled, you know, eight times out of ten. But for those, every time he'd lump it forward, he'd—he'd he'd always so that, score. That's more power size. So now, with the way um, sports science has moved on, it's more about agility. So you get a kid who's manip- ball manipulation agility runs you know he, he, he'll, he'll, he'll do unpredictable things so what you've got to do is you've got to guard against taking that away and professionalise him so you know a bit like so how I can get I can get my head around this remember when Michael Owen came into the Liverpool team he just got the ball ran at the goal and mm. then he was like wow and it was so direct and then as you get old as you get become more professional you stop doing that don't you so I think what we do is with young kids we can't stop them at six, seven, and eight, doing that, where clubs do, clubs go right. You're a right back, and I just want you to go up and down there and get back. And, so, and then they sort of tell them they stop doing all the wonderful things and they just start doing functional things. Mm. And it's really, really important that you you don't do that to kids. So that's the big thing about the playground mentality, keeping them to do all wow moments and do things. That, oh my god, how did he do that? Mm. How can a seven year old do that? And that's what we want in our indoor when you go in the academy and kids do things like that. You want to keep them things. Mm. So well, I think at other clubs, they stop it mm. and they get them to do positional and we don't do that. Mm. And that's what I've learned. My So what, what, what have I learned myself, myself bears on it? As I've evolved and I look at things, you just want you just want to find a trend and you want to find a flannel and you just want them to carry on doing their nine out of ten things as long as they can. Mm. Because let's be honest, when you get to 15, you can't take four or five people on score and put it in the top corner, can you? <laughs> so yeah. I remember Trent, Trent went, when Trent made his debut um, against Tottenham, his mum texted me after about 25 minutes. Went, he hasn't done that. <laughs> I know I'm sitting there shitting myself that he's not going to make a mistake he's just going to get through the game he's not going to make a mistake he's just going to be steady Eddie do it and I just text her back saying he's not eight anymore he can't be he can't score at it by half time yeah. he's, he's doing great he hasn't done it he hasn't he made any mistakes he's doing well that's, what I mean. that's mad isn't it so. um, very good last thing I was going to say on it mate what, what do you feel so I've got to ask you the question and kind of be careful with your answer type thing when a player gets kind of you know bigged up like 
so for example my question is what's it looking like for maybe the next trend but at the same time how do you manage that way i seen a I seen an interview recently with um who's the young scouse lad midfielder um and he got got robbie fowler tweeted saying he's the next gerard um jesus jones no um he was around the same time um short i went up to rangers with gerard for a bit midfielder center mid oh um oh George Luster. yeah so i remember fowler tweeted saying um oh, like this player coming on now gonna be the next gerard and you think what pressure's that kid got on now you know he's no one really knows about him and then you'd have god texting you saying Twitter, or tweeting yeah. you saying <clears throat> this is the next gerard one what does that do to a young player and the second question but the question is without doing exactly that are there any kind of trent ish type players where you think fucking hell he's gonna he's got a good chance him at the academy there are, at the moment there's some really good players at the academy now and to be honest with you you, you need to have you need to be dedicated you need to make sure that you go to bed you eat the right stuff and you see that when you're at melwood that everyone's a competitor and you need to acclimatize yourself to that you need to make sure you're not out you're not you know you're not your girlfriend at two o'clock in the morning you're in bed you're eating the right stuff you're doing all the right things because i'll be honest when i think now about trent i think what trent's been really really lucky is he's gone to melwood and he's he's listened to, he's looked at melner and he's looked at henderson and they have they've kept him where he is and they've made he's looked at them and gone i'm going to be like them mm. and i think they are the two ultimate people aren't they if you think about it milner and henderson are driven live the live the lives right don't do anything silly and they you know and eat eat properly and you know you've got to live like an athlete haven't you you know, stay, you know, the day before you don't go shopping, you don't do anything zaft because when you're in, it's the ninety, it's, it's the ninety first minute, and there's like four more minutes to go. If you've been walking around the Stafford Centre the day before, and your legs, <laughs> you know what I mean. If you haven't Not been in, kid. if you haven't been, if you haven't, if you sat on the couch and rested your legs, and then that, then then you 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 know you every fibre in you's burning, then you've you've been dedicated, haven't you? Mm. And that is the the minute differences between winning and losing is that, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that's the thing. What it is, and you can see, you know, you know, Instagram. You see the players now; they're never out the gym. They all, you know, they eat, they eat, they eat perfectly. You know what I mean? They live dream. I think if one thing that the manager has done is, I think last year the team was like in a bubble of let's win the next game, let's win the next game, let's eat, drink, do everything properly. You know, I can't remember there being an, an instant where. Any anything was wrong, or you know, one of our players was drink driving, or doing it like that. It just it seemed to be just didn't happen. No, it, mm. it just it seems to be like the, the the group of really willing each other on, don't they? And I think that's the biggest thing I could compliment I could give to Trent was that it, he's had Milner, he's had Henderson there to guide them, mm. and maybe in the past other kids haven't had that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That so like structure. Maybe, you know, more. I think maybe maybe you might be in a team. You know, I don't want to dingy people off and. I don't want to disrespect anyone, but you might be a young kid might have gone into a team and not had them influences and had wrong influences, and you've got to be careful of that, haven't you? Well, yeah, you can imagine like a, when Balotelli was in the team or something. You know, if he comes in and he maybe <laughs> happens to be sitting next to Balotelli, is, is that the right yeah, or yeah, Milner? So, so he, he can do that. He can do. Yeah, but I just think that like you know, like a million and Anderson, just you know, yeah. and I don't really, I don't, I've. I've, I've I don't really know them. If I'll be honest, I don't really know all I know of here, what Trent's talk about them, what people have said about them. But I just think that if you're in the Liverpool team now, they are keeping the kids on the right level. Mm. I think you know, I think that's why we're champions. Well, may I continue? Anything else, Tom? No. Well. Thank you so much, mate. I've yeah. really enjoyed this. Yeah. It was a big insight, that. Yeah. Really, uh, really enjoyed it, mate. And like I say, loads of questions, got them all answered. And, and thanks, for, uh, thanks for finding us, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. No pressure. Cheers, pal. Yep.